Look at all this beautiful snow. It'd be a real shame if I took it all and tried to make it into a mead. Now that we have our snow, we're gonna go ahead and let this melt naturally. Um, I'm not gonna heat it. I'll tell you why in a bit. Here we are, we're gonna make a snow water based mead. I had to double my bucket. I went and got another whole, uh, basically six and a half gallon fermenter of, I, of snow because I learned that that six and a half gallon bucket of snow turned into one gallon. So I have roughly about two gallons of snow water here um, and I'll explain the rest of my recipe right here. We are using this water, about two gallons of it. We're gonna be using six pounds of clover honey and the yeast for today is gonna to come from our wild fermentation. So we're hoping that the yeast will come from the honey, in this case, because this is a, a unpasteurized, unfiltered honey, meaning that there is still possible yeast in there. A wild fermentation is a little bit different because it doesn't have as much control as, let's say, synthetic yeast or a um, store-bought yeast, but that's okay. Anyways, let's go ahead and do this. Um, in the second area, I'm gonna split this mead into two different things, and we'll talk about that later. But let's go ahead and mix our snow water and our um, honey. Also, I am gonna run the water through this filter here just to make sure that I get any grass or any small things that might be in there out of the mead. I don't really want grass in the mead. So this is actually uh, 2.36 gallons of water. I'm gonna up my honey value by one pound. Okay, I mixed everything together. I'm calling an audible. I'm changing my plan. Alongside the, along, my, my dog is participating in this. Alongside the wild yeast, I'm gonna use this blueberry, basically it's a puree, it's blueberries that I blended. This will provide wild yeast as well because I did not put anything to stabilize, so there's wild yeast on this. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this in too. All right, so we have our mixture. We are now going to uh, basically just cover this thing with my normal lid, which is somewhere, and then let it ferment. Super simple, and I'll give you updates as it ferments, but I think it's gonna be a very interesting and very nice mead. Let's go ahead and get it started. Okay, it has been four days since we started this possible fermentation. I think this is fermenting, mainly because when I stir this around, there's a little bit of degassing, which means that I think the yeast are doing something. So we're gonna let it continue to ferment and hopefully it really kicks start here soon. It is now three weeks later. I know for a fact this is fermenting because we started at 1.100. We are currently at, I just disturbed it, but before I disturbed it, it's at 1.054. So it is clearly fermenting. It's taking a while. This is wild yeast we're talking about. So they kind of have their own rule set. We're gonna let this continue to ferment. And I believe it's gonna ferment through at least a bulk of the sugar. I guess we'll find out depending on how um, strong these wild yeast are. So we are 30 days into this mead. It is at current. It's currently at 1.030. We started at 1.010. You can see kind of, if I can get it to focus, it's a little bit hard to see, but there is activity still happening in the mead. Um, there is a slight reflection, so I can't get a good video of it. I think it's still fermenting. This is obviously a wild yeast, so it's unpredictable. Let's see if it finishes dry or stays sweet. All right, we are back. It has been 36 days since we started this. Now, it's not done, done fermenting. The current gravity of it is 1.020. Now, that's not fermented out, but this is wild yeast. We were depending on lots, mainly nutrient from the honey, which is not really any, and the blueberries. So I'm very shocked that they even burned through uh, 80 points of gravity. We're looking at somewhere in the realm of a 10 and a half percent mead, um, but that's a wild yeast. I'm still impressed. So that's our current gravity. Let's go ahead and get a taste test of it. Like I said, I think it's done. It's clearing up some. I don't see any more fermentation and I saw a fair amount of fermentation during the process. So let's get a taste test. It's a very nice um, pink color, but pur uh, also purple. Ooh, definitely get this, the um, blueberry aroma as well as sweetness on the nose. 
Oh, it's like a, that's interesting. Oh yeah, it definitely still sweet. There's a lot of, like 1020 is sweet for sure, but it feels like it's even sweeter than 1020. I think that's possibly due to um, its perception of sweetness. I mean, it's it's pretty darn good, just as is. It's got a decent mouth body, mouth body, mouth feel. It uh, has a nice um, bold fruitiness to it. And I think that blue, the blueberries worked really well with this one. I'm very impressed. There's no esters, there's no weird stressed yeast taste. It's pretty good. I'm actually gonna finish that part off. Now let's go ahead and move this into, since it's done fermenting, quote, um, we're gonna move it into here. This is a, of course, clean, sanitized, three gallon glass carboy. So let me go ahead and do that. All right, so after some difficulty uh, using this little cheesecloth and some things, I was able to get mostly a berryless um, racking. However, I still got some in there. And uh, it's fine. I was gonna say with this thing, I could have probably pushed it further had I given it some yeast nutrient like Fermade O or Fermade K or DAP or something, but I really wanted to test the waters of these wild yeast. Now here's the tricky thing. I'm not gonna do this on video, but I am gonna save this yeast and it's gonna be quite the pain because there's a lot of berry in there. I really wanna see if I can use this yeast again. So I'm gonna do this separately, but I will save this yeast. For this part though, we're gonna go ahead and put an airlock on. There is headspace. We're not gonna age it for forever. I just wanna see if it'll you know, clear up some, probably rack it a few times. And then I do think, I don't know if I wanna put any maple syrup in. I talked about that, but it is pretty sweet already. So I gotta consider that. So I'll come back with some new updates. All right, here we are. It's been another week. I went ahead and racked it again and I used my little filtering method to try and get some, some more of the berries out because there were a significant amount. So what does it taste like? It's still very sweet. As I've really brainstormed what to do with this, I'm worried about it being too sickly sweet. So I had mentioned putting maple syrup in it. I don't know if I'll do that. I don't think I will just because it'll be so sweet to be sicking, sickingly sweet, just like way too much. What I'm gonna do instead, it needs some balancing help. So going on the natural method, we are gonna use some lemon juice to help balance the acidity side because it, right now it's pretty flat. It doesn't have a lot of acid, a lot of um, really extra flavor or mouthfeel coming from the acid portion. So we are gonna add one ounce of this lemon juice. Ooh, yeah, that definitely, um, it contrasts the sweetness well for one, but it also adds a little bit of like a clinging, a tanginess to it that adds an extra element of mouthfeel. I like that. I think that's great. Okay, the next step, and before we bottle it, I do want to actually oak it. So this is an oak spiral. This is a Spanish cedar oak spiral. It will add some more tannic value. It'll add some woody flavor, of course, because it, it's oak. So this is a, this is greater for three gallons, this one oak spiral, and we're just gonna put it all in. It probably needs three to five weeks to extract, but with this being not quite three gallons, it might be faster. So I'm gonna put this straight in. Okay, so uh, my crazy system here, I have a marbles, a marble bag, and it's gonna connect to here, and this will hopefully pull the whole oak spiral down. When I actually try to get this out, I'll probably just cut the bag open and release the marbles, but here we go. Uh, I mean, it kind of worked. Bag's a little tall. Oh well, so better than it just floating on top. Now, let's come back in about, like I said, three to five weeks-ish to see how the oak imparts and go from there. All right, it's been three weeks since we put the oak in. It's at a great point, because um, I've been tasting along the way to see if I liked where it was and when I wanted to pull it off. The current gravity is 1.006. Now, after the primary, previously, we thought it was 1.020. During that time, um, there could have been some possible more fermentation, which could have chewed through a little more gravity. There also could have been an inaccurate gravity reading on my end. So I could have goofed, who knows? Now that we know the current gravity, let's do a quick taste test. So with the oak, we still got the bright blueberry flavor. We also have this um, nice coating of the mouth that comes from the oak and the tannins within that. It kind of pulls the moisture out of your mouth and that's what tannin is often in this case. 
The body of this meat is really full. It's very bright. It's got kind of this um, acidity that is uh, interesting and really nice, actually. Yeah, I think that acidity, it's, um, it's more uh, uh, malic acid, which is less sharp and more just like round. So I'm getting that kind of side. I do think because this is low, you know, come down some, this would be interesting with some maple syrup. I've already mixed in a little bit of maple syrup into this glass. Let's taste test it with some maple syrup as the back sweetening agent. Ooh, yeah, so all that real um, sharp, not sharp, I guess it's a little sharp. Bite acid is really tempered down by the maple syrup that I tested with. Ooh, that is good. And you still have the roundness, you still have the full body side. Okay, here's my plan. This definitely needs maple syrup. I said roughly about a half a pound. I think that's still gonna be accurate. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off the oak and then add my maple syrup to taste. All right, so I've mixed in, I put it in this bucket and I mixed in my um, maple syrup. I got it to the same point. This is a glass of that, of basically what I just told you about. It tastes the exact same. I added a different variable though. In this little test tube and in this half gallon you see right here, I used, I'll show you a picture, the Trees Knees Spicy Maple. This has some habanero peppers mixed into it. I thought just for fun, let's see what it would be like. The, um, the final gravity quote for the spicy maple is 1.0, wow, is they're both the same, 1.016. Uh, so both of them ended at the same final gravity, assuming there's no re-fermentation. But let me tell you what the spicy maple attributes. Oh man, I love this stuff. Ooh, that tingling. Um, it's got the spiciness, it's got the maple syrup character that we talked about from the regular one, but it does have the little slight kick. And I thought that'd be fun. It's only a half gallon, so it's just a sampler. Mm, that's gonna be good. Now, I don't want to let this age in this bucket because obviously headspace and air and, and mead don't always mix super well together. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this set for probably 24 hours. My goal is to watch for any fermentation. Theoretically, we've capped out the wild yeast and they won't be able to re-ferment on anything because we had residual sweetness. That's kind of the assumption there. So I'm gonna wait 24, 48 hours, come back, and if there's no re-fermentation, we're gonna bottle these two things, and then they'll bottle age where they can do that safely. Okay, we're back. It's been like six, almost seven weeks since we bottled this, and I have a little bit of unfortunate news. I was prompted that this started re-fermentation, when I looked at the other one that suddenly spontaneously kickstarted again about a week after I bottled it. And here's what I noticed. I don't know if you could hear that, but there's a slight amount of um, hiss. Now the good news is it's not explosive. The bad news is that it's carbonated and it was I was not intending to carbonate this thing. So it's got a little bit of a fizz to it, which is gonna add something. This, this could have been bad had the wild yeast kicked in and gone even further. If they had like, if I had super sweetened this thing, there could have been a chance that bottle bombs would have happened. So be careful. Um, I really kind of test, in my attempt to keep this super natural, I didn't stabilize. I should have stabilized. Anyways, let's do a taste test with a bit of carbonation, unplanned carbonation. That's just a testament that wild yeast are unpredictable and you still have to cater to them like you would normal yeast. I do like the color on this thing quite a bit. You can't really see now, but it's a nice like ruby-ish color. It's really clear, which is nice. Of course, I, I put it in the fridge, so it's cold. The ruby color is nice. The carbonation is surprisingly nice looking. Oh yeah, you can definitely tell there's a little bit of fermentation on that, um, the sugars that they could ferment on, because all the sweetness is, the sweetness that was there before is not as strong. It's still good though. The tannin is really prominent. Yeah, the tannin pulling a lot of moisture out of my mouth. It's got a really nice um, blueberry taste though, the berry taste and that maple syrup. I mean, they go well together. I think those are two flavors that really, really jive together. Uh, it's got a, um, a little bit of a wine-esque feel to me, a little bit of a wine-esque taste. I think this is great, even with some um, light carbonation. Again, it was not a huge amount. It's been, like I said, six or seven weeks. So if this was going to ferment like crazy and explode on me, it probably would have by now. Um, that's not to say go crazy, but uh, just be careful. 
I've really enjoyed this. If I were to do it again, I would do the exact same things, but I'm, I'm a pretty decent believer of stabilizing things. So I probably would go through and actually stabilize the mead, even with this being a wild yeast, and then add the sugars in just to make sure there's no re-fermentation. That leads to some bad incidents. And I'm very thankful that this did not explode. So the uh, spicy maple syrup is, is up there and it's got that spicy maple syrup taste. It's very good. The regular maple syrup is also very good. This has been a fun project and uh, I, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I will of course be back with uh, more videos and I enjoyed getting to do a wild yeast. I think it's uh, very unpredictable, but very fun. So I'll see you guys in the future with another video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.